You know, I envy you, Sherry. You can talk to other people and they won't ignore you. And I envy you. You can ignore any person you're bored with. You don't miss out on much. Most men are dull, unlike yourself. Well, I'm flattered. I think our family portrait used to hang here. I had a surprise for my mother. I was holding an ancient Greek vase, or rather, quite a big piece. You had a shovel with you, John. I remember now, we dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona and were eager to show my mother right away. For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody answered. We thought that she was busy. So we left the vase and ran downstairs. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. I decided to gather some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Yes. It came from upstairs. The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor. And your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. Otto Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. Her things are still here. Presumably Mycroft never felt the need to sort through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to. No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality. It's a strange feeling to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall. All anything except the deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before. This room you always reeked with an acrid so medicinal stench. I'm sorry. And here is the reason. This picture was drawn by my mother. I recognize her hand. There's a date on it, 8th of December, 1868. This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. There's no date at all. Straps on the bed. Just doesn't look right. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily. Not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. Seems this was the most frequently used medication.
Oh, I would love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. For medical purposes, I suppose. Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. My mother loved flowers. They made her smile. I remember we would bring a new bouquet Look what I found! To make her the White King is... That's why we collected all the violet flowers we could find on the island. You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can... Leave any time you want. Nice move. You saved the king and checkmated the black king with the rook. You're not obliged to be here, Sheriff.
We can leave any time you want. You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. <sighs> Straps on the bed. Just doesn't look right. You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. You can leave any time you want. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason. Bars covering the windows from the inside. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. Oh, it brings back some memories. The broken plate shards were all over the floor. Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal... Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. <laughs> I don't believe you! Liars! Get away from me! It's not true! It's not real! What? Oh. Everything will be okay, Sherry. I promise. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died. My, my mother, she, she was not just ill, but bad. God have mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more, John. I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. Every time you... I, I just don't... Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. I... I know. But can we at least leave it for another day? It cannot wait. Let us find another door and finally learn the truth. That's pointless, Sherry. To date, you have had no control over the return of these memories. It is all triggered by your work elsewhere on Cordona. You must accept that this will have to wait. Are you all right? In the end, little has changed. My mother was still unwell, just not with tuberculosis. What I do not yet understand is why Mycroft lied about it. There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait. Did you hear that? Yes. Metallic souls. What is a sailor doing here? Sherlock Holmes, isn't it? Huh. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You can call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose? You're a fast learner, sir. I cannot believe that Mr. Vogel has somehow successfully called my attention to his gallery. You're here with an invitation to visit it, obviously. My word, you are fast, Mr. Holmes. Could you explain how you came to that conclusion? Of course. Explanations are my favourite part of any conversation. Hands without any sign of regular physical activity in contradiction to one who would most usually wear such a uniform. The paint in your hair is pink. I don't know of any military service that paints their ships pink, 
Unless they have launched a new fashionable fleet. A sailor with the soul of an artist? I would suggest rather a gallery employee disguised as a sailor to mislead me. How many artists on the island know where I live and of my passion for deduction? Werner Vogel is clearly at the top of the list. And you've been attempting to conceal something square-shaped within your pocket. An invitation, I suppose. An invitation to Mr. Vogel's gallery. That was remarkable, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Vogel was right about your genius. I think he may have even underestimated you. This is your invitation. Please tell Mr. Vogel that the seed has been planted. He asked me to tell you to do so, if you win this little game. Farewell. You won't believe it, but Werner's other... Their idea was to put me in a dress. You won't believe it, but Werner's other idea was to put me in a dress. Mr. Holmes, you came! Oh, how kind. Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. Your man's disguise was easily debunked, Mr. Vogel, but I shall admit that you planted in me the seed of curiosity. Ah, terrific! I had no doubt you'd put the pieces together. Let us call it an opening gambit before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. And this locked area downstairs, what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut, and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no! It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes opened. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around, if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see. (sighs) 
I wish I could show you the gallery under different circumstances, but life is beautiful in its unpredictability, isn't it? You sure you don't like art, Sherry? You sure you don't like art, Sherry? Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. The left step's length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. Old and hasn't been used for a long time. Closed with a metal bolt. Footprints. Size nine and a half. A true artist never shows an unfinished piece. Sherry, how about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness unbroken. A handprint of the thing from another world. But it looks fresh and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. Sodden and mold ridden. One presumes deliberately. The parasites of creativity. Or just a reflection of the artist. Saturn devouring his son. Oh, a grim composition. I'm flinching in its ferocity, yet somehow beautiful. Ugh, oh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. A Malpal butt. Cold fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a cold moustache. Not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt. He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Vogel heard the noise. At the sound of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room. but. The vandalism was a cover for the theft. These are not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? Extravagant paintings have been left to rot in a basement. A commentary on decay and the crumbling of society, correct? I don't know. But that's absurd. Of course you know. It's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind that forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, what's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupts the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. It matters not what is or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to wrest back control of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel, even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement above all others is objective and rational thought. I see, then, why you dislike art, for it means whatever you want it to. Or, perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Aha! Uh -huh. Mr. Vogel, my investigation has revealed that the intrusion was not merely vandalism, but theft. The limping visitor left your place with a canvas. That's very impressive. This thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp. Do any of your clients or artists come to mind? My! 
Your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. I should introduce you to Bosch's works. Alas, I'm afraid I cannot suggest a culprit. The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belong to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the coffin. Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm. Indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. So where can I find Boniface Mercurio? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. What was depicted in the piece? Hmm, a bound woman, wrapped in robes, being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news. Or at least with a good story. Mr. Holmes, I have something for you. Mr. Holmes, I see what you're up to. Mysterious stranger pursues betrothed woman. But please, let us keep things professional. I have in my possession an envelope containing details of a special assignment for you. Tell me, are you interested? Miss Sertle, I am not pursuing you and I am not pursuing further work at the minute. Well, it shall wait for you.
Nice of... Let's pick something that suits you. Be careful with what you've taken. Let's pick... Be careful with what you've taken. May I ask you something? I've never heard of it. I'm sorry. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I don't know, my friend. Perhaps someone else knows? Merhaba. Are you able to help me? I don't know, my friend. Perhaps someone else knows? Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. You should... know what you're doing.
Boniface, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. Do you know what makes a lady happy? Paid rent. The chest has been searched. Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Aunt May Whiskey, Brandy Bucks. Quite a collection he had here. It appears the wine was truly awful. I wonder where he got that fancy camera. Despite the overall tendency towards mass, you cannot sit with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. The blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called Expressionism. Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. A normal kitchen knife. Could be the murder weapon. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife. Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. Look at this, John. Isn't it our stolen demon? Ah! 
Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. It's time for some chemical magic, John. we need sherry as expected but that doesn't mean it won't tell us anything let's put it on the easel where it belongs I guess this is his most ordinary painting spot the two differences John if the intruder didn't take it the skull should be somewhere here Nothing behind it. Monster was actually a man. Poor girl. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know, crimes and such like, daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up, but the act of love, it wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation, and the girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse. All right, stick to the character, tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details.
What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen the ghost. Mr. Mercurio is dead. Oh. Is this... Uh, is this some kind of joke, Boniface? What do you mean you're dead? I mean that Boniface won't ever pay his rent again. Oh, my dear. If you need to delay your payment for another week, that is all right. There is no need for these games. But this is the last time you hear me. It's not about payment, ma'am. If you open Mercurio's flat, you can see the dead body for yourself. Deary, you will not trick me into entering in your flat again, do you hear? I am not Mercurio. I am investigating the theft of one of his paintings, and I chose to deceive you by disguising myself as Mercurio to get inside his flat. Very well, I'll play along. You're not Mercurio. Mercurio has died, metaphorically or not. What else do you want? Ma'am, you're very difficult. All right, let's return to the point. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... Maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offence, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat, and don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Whoa, Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. Contest for the guests of Cordona. Find hidden treasure.
May I ask for your assistance? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. They come to our land, then they... Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorised. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow, here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here. So I have full authority here to ask you to leave, or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back.
people in the crowd are shouting about a murder in the camp. Are you trying to hide it? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. If it was under control, if there was no dead body, you wouldn't be as nervous as you are. You would be sitting in your cosy dark corner of the city hall room doing nothing as usual. Yet, you're here, trying to deal with a series of problems you never asked for. These insults are inappropriate. You don't know what I'm doing for this camp. Even though the rest of City Hall doesn't give a bloody squat about the refugees, maybe I didn't want to be assigned to this camp. But I'm trying to do my best for these people. If not for my work, they might not have any shelter or food even. I apologise, Mr Harlow. Perhaps I was prejudiced towards you, but in any case, I'm sure that you would still want this to be over as quickly as possible. The current reality is that neither you nor the police are managing things well here. You are unable to calm the crowd. You have simply never handled a situation like this before. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I'm looking for a young refugee woman. She must be inside the camp. She's with child or was with child recently. Help me find her and I'll help you deduce what really happened here. You may indeed be quite a perceptive fellow, but I still don't see how you can help me here. Just tell the police I'm with City Hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest. Trust me. But first, you'll find my witness. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her. And I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? Oh, so you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time. But I read the papers. Yes, this whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Uh, smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Chooksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. Murder! Beasts! So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so disturbed. Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewkesbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mould. Go on, look around. But don't make yourself too at home, as if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there, near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. 
Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. A fresh crack, as if the crate was hit recently. Someone bled profusely here. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. Clearly a left handprint here. Police boots. Always happy to trample it. A heavy boot with a worn out sole. A man's footprint. These events have fractured into so many pieces. But I know you can collect them all, Sherlock. Oh, carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. No hint of blood or impact. Someone was dragged against their will. Can I ask you a question? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very... Malpal. Soaked with salt water. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. Our dead fella truly has had a day of misfortune. Help me, please. Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. Excuse me, just one question. A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. 
Hmm, coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around. A steel dirk, sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however the wound is too messy to be certain. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? Heavy boots, with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping, John. A violent death. But this man, limping. Coal dust. I think we're on to something here, John. You know what? I'd like to understand. What? How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the if first place? Find out about the passage. It... If they find out about the... Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. Coppers smell fishy here, Sherry. Sherry, just look at this. Living quarters in a... We have seen some dark places in Cordona. But this... Nausea and stomach pain is not what he needs now. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. I'll use it to create a solution. That will kill, not save him. These events have fractured into so many people. This is... But I know you can collect them all, Sherlock. May I ask you something? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. May I ask you something? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. Time to check your who, what... I think we can find all we need here in the camp. Let's have a good look around.
Are you able to help me? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. I've collected all the ingredients. Now to prepare the first aid solution. This should make you feel better, my friend. Now remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do and what I am responsible for are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on city hall's behalf too? They are, minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island, so there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. Murder! Beasts! Refugees have been detained and will not leave until all the circumstances are clarified. No one deserves to end up in a place like this. Excuse me, just one question. Nothing I can tell you, sir, but I'll...
We have seen some dark places in Cordona. But this. We have seen some dark places in Cordona. But this. Are you able to help me? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. May I ask for your assistance? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. This isn't working. We might need a different... Such a mess. Let's figure it out. Can you satisfy my curiosity? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. May I ask for your assistance? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? You still here? Your problem, not mine. Go and bother someone else with this, son. The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. I'm busy. Don't you have papers to fill? <laughs> City Hall lubberheads. I'm... Busy. Don't you have papers to fill? <laughs> City Hall lubberheads. I'm busy. Don't you have papers to fill? <laughs> City Hall lubberheads. What a pleasant man this Mr. Chewksbury is. We have seen some dark places in Cordona. This. I hope I'm not making a grave mistake in trusting you, Mr. Holmes. I hope I'm not making a grave mistake in trusting you, Mr. Holmes. I hope I'm not making a grave mistake in trusting you, Mr. Holmes. Can I ask you a question? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Back off. Excuse me, just one question. Nothing I can tell you, sir. But others might know more. These events have fractured into so many pieces, but I know you can collect them all, Sherlock.
A single Malpal butt. Roadman cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. 
the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger, but somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. You think one small clock can make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make... The whole machine crumble. I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nayla? Nayla. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Nayla's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Nayla, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Nayla. My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Nayla doesn't want us meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. Terrible events are behind that. Sherry. You still here? Your problem, not mine. The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck. Two lines and a point. Do you know anything about it? You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though, such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. 
Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right? You're disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. Disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. Sherry, wait. You might want to settle all the matters in the camp before leaving. We probably won't be coming back here anytime soon. It's a shame we didn't learn more about that scheme the guards were talking about. The corruption in Cordona flourishes once more. We simply don't have time for this, John. We need to proceed with the case.
What a lovely man this Bernadotti is, eh, Sherry? Can't wait until we get to meet him. Guests of Cordona, the treasures await you. Collect them all and return for more. Seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for so an what's the infiltration though? plan, Sherry? I'd go in through the rooftop if we had a harpoon gun. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. Can I ask you a question? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. Porcelain friend for every child. That's our way in, Sherry. Hey, yo. This is private property. You lost something. I'm here to discuss business with Mr. Bernadotti. I tried the front door, but... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away or you'll never walk again. Capito? 
It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One. Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... Cho. I did try to resolve this peacefully. Take a rest, my friend. The snuff's ready. Do some... Give him the pepper snuff. Don't bother moving. The snuff's ready. Take a rest, my friend. Not that easy! Overcome him! Don't rush! Miss the party. Oh, don't cry. You'll give him the pepper snuff. Oh, wow. oh. Don't bother. The snuff's ready. Give him the pepper snuff. No more crime for you until next month. The snuff's ready. Don't bother moving. You give him the pepper snuff. You've disappointed me so much, Sherlock. Jerry, look! This seems familiar. Is this? Let's see what's hidden there. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. A century old at least. A Dogon statue from West Africa. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's all right. I won't. An like you didn't harm the folks on the I way here. Many collectors and museums would be interested in having it.
you don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch you to pieces. Keep standing in my way and no one will ever see you again. Right, oh, yes. Yep, well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. Please don't shoot me. I have a family. Spare me. This is it! This is where all the magic happens. Spare me! This is it! This is where all the magic happens. through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here, and we shall talk. Whenever you're ready. I'd hate to intrude. Bad news. The thug you sent to the refugee camp only succeeded in stabbing himself. His next and final journey will be to the morgue. All oh, your horses. Who the hell are you? Sherlock Holmes. And you are Niccolo Bernadotti, a smuggler, kidnapper, and notorious cutthroat, among other things. Few men would dare waltz into my office and address me like that. You are either overconfident or unintelligent. This is private property. Give me one reason why I should not shoot you on this spot. I am sure my friends at the station would call it self-defense. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any one I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. 
The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, and I am compelled to ask why you want it. Who is the man visible in the photograph? An associate? Not yet, Mr. Holmes. Though with this picture, that may change. The man in the photo is a British envoy on Cordona. What exactly do you want from him? My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? I could not help but appreciate the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, oh, high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. Why did you send your man to remove the woman from the camp? Without a photograph, her testimony was the next best thing. Securing her was in everyone's interest. Victims and witnesses all too often disappear. I thought the girl was cipher with us. I did not anticipate what would happen at the camp. I saw refugees from the camp at your warehouse. They work for you. I have made certain arrangements with City Hall and the police. Thanks to me, refugees can work and be paid. It's a pathway to freedom. And how much do you save by capitalizing on their cheap labor? I have heard no complaints. They seem happy just to get out of that slum. Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees.
give them a chance for a better life. Ha! <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home, outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy, but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotte. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British Imperial... I take your point. I am positive our deal will benefit everyone. I am positive our deal will benefit everyone. I am positive our deal will benefit everyone. I am Positive our deal. Will benefit everyone. I am positive our deal will benefit everyone. I am positive our deal. The front door's now open, everyone. sir. You can leave through it. If you want, of course. Bernadotte Limited will always look forward to your visits. Bernadotte Limited will always look forward to your visits. Bernadotte Limited will always look forward to your visits. Sherry, don't you think this office suits me? I am positive our deal will benefit everyone. Sherry, don't you think this office suits me? Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft?
I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. One presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more then. I found the source of Mercurio's artistic inspiration. A photograph. What troubled me was that the sexual act captured was non-consensual. She was violated? Dear God, how despicable. Her abuser was in fact the British envoy. Mercurio took a picture of him committing the atrocity and then used it as artistic inspiration. I had no idea a mere break-in would eventually expose such barbarity. Mr. Vogel, I want you to make everything public, including the photograph. I'm sure you have a connection at the Cordona Chronicle. Ah, uh, Mr. Holmes, loyal to your own truth till the end. Yes, I'm acquainted with the staff of the Chronicle. The story is sensational and will surely draw attention to the gallery. But you must be aware that exposing the scandal will further hurt the victim. Does that not bother you? No matter what one does, the truth tends to come out, as well it should. I won't be the one to stand in its way. Though it's only your subjective truth being exposed, not that I'm judging. It's perfectly reasonable for everyone to have their own views. When you called me, you knew exactly what you would get. Oh, but I'm not like you, Mr. Holmes. I cannot be sure of anything. Regardless, I must thank you, for art's sake. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I had hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. Thank you.